It never fails, ladies and gentlemen. It was Tuesday. It's starting right now. And, uh, oh, dang. And we're starting right away with a bunch of gift subs from Omega Bill Murray. Appreciate paying it forward over there. But this cat wasn't here literally like a minute ago. And he knew that it was going to start. And here he is. Jumped up here. And, uh... Cat knows when I start these streams, man. <laughs> yeah, best co-host in the business. That's right. Welcome to It Was Tuesday, hosted by myself, James Chen, and uh, your my co-host, Nathan. Nathan, what are your thoughts? Meow. Meow. No, nothing, nothing. Meow. All right, he's not doing the call response thing. Anyways, hello, everybody. Uh, today... Uh, I wanted to start the year off, actually, by just doing a Q&A session. I did a Q&A session um, a couple, uh, a few episodes ago, like a few months ago, and people seem to enjoy it. Uh, I really, oh no, this guy will meow. I mean, if, if it's feeding time, he will meow forever, Super Moose. He will meow. Um, but... Um, yeah, he demands comfort, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to start it off with a Q&A session this year just so we can kind of get the year started and, you know, I can find out what everybody, you know, wants to know about and hear about and if there's any questions because 2023 is going to be definitely a very interesting year for the FGC, I think. Uh, a lot of changes and a lot of, you know, uh, adaptations coming from the pandemic and such. So I wanted to get your guys' you know, thoughts on these things and just kind of find out what's on your guys' mind. But uh, obviously, uh, I think that uh, what a lot of people are going to do <laughs> is probably immediately come in and ask about the... Uh, oh, Jesus, I have all the wrong topics here from last time. Oh, geez. Okay. Hang on a second. Let me clear all this out. I have all the topics from last week's. Forgot to update this. Uh, but basically, uh, I know everybody's going to come in here and want to ask about the Arturo Sanchez, a.k.a. NYC Furby, a.k.a. Sabin, plus Macharino situation. Uh, look, I, I, even in my regular stream already, I've had a bunch of people come and ask about this. So, uh, hang on. The Arturo slash Maturino situation. So I know a lot of people have already come into my chat and, uh, asked me about this, you know, what my thoughts on this situation is. And... Uh, currently right now, I, I, I mean, it seems like to me, oh, geez, it seems like to me, um, oh, will we get viewer lounges? Yes, we will get viewer lounges, uh, will be coming very, very soon, <laughs> Duck Helmet, uh, as I give my cat belly rubs, and I'm sure everybody wants to be able to see this. Let's see, can I actually pull this up, or, oh, no, never mind, he stood up, oh, cat. So I wanted to kind of talk about this situation, uh, you know, uh, ahead of time. Now, I don't want to delve too much into it. This is not going to be a deep dive into all the situation and accusations and everything crazy that is going on uh, out there right now. There's a lot of information. And if you want to look up all the information about this, uh, about this, um, I don't want to call it drama, but about this situation, you can definitely uh, find a lot of people talking about it out there. Uh, however, uh, you know, the one thing that I guess uh, from the perspective of the, that I want to approach this from is mostly just kind of like talking about Arturo in general. Uh, look, Arturo, the very first uh, Solo Tuesday show I ever did you know, I brought Arturo on for the stream because I wanted to talk to him about his efforts, about growing the fighting game community and, you know, his history and why he's so, you know, so feverish about trying to grow the fighting game community and do so much for the fighting game community. And I brought him onto the stream for that reason because, you know, I genuinely have a strong belief in 
you know, how he does view the fighting game community, how he approaches it and how he wants so much to see it grow because of the position that he's been in. Uh, and because he's so old school and, 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 you know, he's, he's been in the scene for so long, but obviously that raises questions here. So just to summarize the situation for those of you who are completely out of the loop, uh, there are uh, Matcherino put out a statement, uh, basically saying that they were dropping Arturo from their team because Arturo had been working for Matcherino for a very long time. He was one of the biggest promoters of Matcherino, trying to get everybody to use Matcherino, and they said that they dropping Ma uh, Arturo from the team due to mismanagement of funds is the statement that came out and immediately uh, Casa Bunch uh, House and ECT and Team Spooky all basically kind of dropped, like uh, those first two said that he was banned from their events and then Team Spooky said that Arturo was going to be dropped from, uh, from, the, uh, from Team Spooky as well. And uh, immediately, you know, Everyone kind of went on the offense and attacked Arturo. Arturo then tried to do a stream where he explained himself and he explained his side of the story. Rob TV even jumped into the stream on the call to try to help Arturo out, and it definitely did not look good. Arturo, uh, Arturo, uh, definitely that stream that Arturo ran definitely hurt him more than it helped him. Let's just put it that way. So uh, Arturo did not come out of that looking particularly uh, good. And the only thing that I want to say right now is that uh, during the past week or so, uh, a lot of people have been talking about it. There have been people trying to come out and defend Arturo and a lot more information has been coming out. And we are kind of getting into a point right now where the uh, veracity, I guess, of the claims by Mancherino are not necessarily as cut and dry as people are thinking that it is. Now, uh, there are some people out there that obviously feel like that this is just cut and dry, done, goodbye, Arturo, see you later. And I guess the only thing that I, 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 I want to add to this is that you know, like I said, I brought Arturo onto the stream for a particular reason, and um, I, I consider myself a pretty decent judge of character, I guess. <laughs> and uh, the only thing that I'm going to say is that none of this honestly makes any sense. From what I know of Arturo, I, I'm just, that's just straight up the way that I view this right now, from what I know of Arturo. So what happened was it was a claim of mismanagement of funds, which immediately got turned into Arturo is stealing money, right? So he is uh, stealing money from uh, Macherino pots. And there's a lot of people who went out there, found some old uh, Macherino uh, records that show that Arturo listed himself as, you know, first place winner or second place winner and paid the money out to him. Now, having run Macherino tournaments, I do know for a fact that, you know, Arturo's saying that you can't pay players out unless you, unless they're all in Macherino so that you can, you basically, they all have to have a Macherino account. So when that you click uh, complete the tournament, it sends a notification to everyone. However, if there are people who do not have a Matcherino account or for whatever reason do not want to go through Matcherino, Arturo's claim is that he basically paid out to himself so that he can give the money to the players separately. Now, basically what happened here is, I mean, a lot of back and forth here. Uh, I don't want to get into it into too much details because I do not want to misrepresent the words that are being said here. Like I said, the only thing that I want to say here is that for me, knowing Arturo, it, does, it doesn't make sense. Like that, That's just the only place that I can come from 
the guy has done so much for the fighting game community. And, you know, it's not even just like, oh, because he's done so much, because he pressed buttons well, that he's absolved from all blame. It's just, logically speaking, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, if, and le- like, unless he's like, unless the mob is after him, right? <clears throat> unless he's really, really, like, if the mob is chasing after him, I can't see why he would take money from any of these pots and from these players. Because the amount of monetary, you know, uh, contributions he's made to the fighting game community, like, outweighs, I feel like, anything that he could take from Maturino. So this is the part that confuses me the most, right? So... He's running tournaments for, like, these super old-school fighting games, like, more obscure KOF games. He does, like, these MVC2 tournaments. He does all these things like that, and he helps Saban Deus, who is a completely different person, by the way. Uh, Saban Deus run a bunch of Soul Calibur 6 tournaments, and trust me, uh, Soul Calibur 6 is not raking in the cash right now in terms of funds and and such. And yeah, I mean, Terry in the chat says that maybe he just saw it as easy money. But this is a guy who really, really promoted, for example, one of the things that he did a long time ago was that uh, he would run tournaments and anytime anybody subscribed to the channel, he would take that money and donate it to the Macharino pot. Now, this could be just some sort of elaborate scam because then eventually he takes that Macharino money pot himself. But it just seems kind of weird, you know, to, to, to have somebody who would do something like that, especially because, like, you would subscribe to him for $5 and he would take the entire $5 and donate it to the Macharino pot. And if he hadn't been paying players for such a long time, I feel like a lot of players would have spoken out already by now. I mean, there's definitely a few players who have said stuff, but, uh, you know, one of them was a very recent can opener thing. And Arturo has said, you know, that he was backlogged, et cetera, et cetera. And again, how much you want to buy into that is, uh, is, is your own, is your own judgment right there. Right. (laughs) Uh, right, and that's the problem, is that he hasn't shown a lot of the receipts, like Gundam Jehudi Kai has said. However, he has started producing some of the receipts, like the mas- Master Mike things. Uh, he definitely showed some receipts. Unfortunately, the receipts seems to be a little bit lower than what Master Mike should have been paid out. So unless Arturo can actually show the math on exactly how much was being, uh, you know... Uh, why the amount came out to what it was that was different than what it said on Macharino. Now, Macharino does take a small cut of some of the prize money when you cash out, etc., etc. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of situations here where we're not sure what's going on. And so I feel like we need to find out more about this. And that's the thing, right? So what Gundam Jehudi Kai says is true, right? It's pretty easy for art to come up with the receipts and show everything and and show what's going on so you know this is kind of a waiting game right now i don't know what's taking arturo so long or if he's just taking a while but um that's the other thing og war destroyer when you eliminate the noise who's claiming to be done wrong and what's their proof and that's kind of the situation that we're at right now because you know obviously a lot of people are clamoring for arturo for the receipts but I feel like we need to see the receipts from the other side. We need more players to come out and just be like, look, I haven't been paid. I haven't been, you know, doing any of this, you know, like, where's this money? This was years ago. This money never happened. You know, why did you wait this long to speak out about it, et cetera, et cetera. And obviously we can't, you know, victim blame or anything like that. But, you know, it is it is an interesting situation here. So. And right, yeah, so Flashy Flashing Masterino might be gathering evidence to take him to court, for sure. So we're in a really interesting situation, but one of the tough things about it is just that, you know, 
when something like this happens, and this is kind of one of the important things and one of the main things that I wanted to talk about a little bit, when something like this happens, one of the interesting things about this is that, you know, when it happens, people talk about it. And, you know, obviously people are quick to jump to sides or whatever or not. You know, I've done the same a lot in the past myself, uh, you know, and I've learned from a lot of that and trying not to do that kind of thing. But once it comes out, people stop following the story. Right. And so there's a lot of information, I think, that has come out that people have been talking about. And I don't know if uh, enough people are discussing it. Uh and so, yeah, so Missing Score brings up Fanatic. Fanatic is somebody who's actually been uh, defending art just because he just feels like it's the right thing to do, not because that they're, you know, good friends or anything like that. So, um, yeah, Fighting Game Community definitely has a lot of issues, the only Grim Crimson, <laughs> and it's really, really tough uh, to... Ooh, Jesus Christ, and I'm breaking things over here. And it's really, really tough to kind of uh, uh, judge it properly, right? It's it's really hard to judge it. And yeah, a lot of people trying to make content, content out of it and such like that. And, you know, obviously people are going to be like, isn't that what you're doing right now, James? I mean, kind of, yeah. But like I said, I know people uh, want to talk to me about this and people have come into my stream and asked me about this a lot. Lot. So that's just what it is. But I feel like we need to have a lot more discussion on this. Uh, we need to have a little bit more, uh, you know, just we just need to analyze the situation a little bit more, you know. Uh, I mean, to be honest with you, the Grim, the only Grim Crimson, you know, you're saying we were getting off the ground too, finally. Not really. <laughs> Fighting game community is still pretty niche. It's still pretty small. It's still pretty small. Uh, but what I think we need to do, uh, you know, uh, right now, honestly, Street Fighter VI might be the big the big, perhaps, breaking ground kind of thing, because Street Fighter VI has the clout and has the power to get us into that point. And if Arturo has been stealing money, it's good that we, you know, find out and, uh, you know, take care of that situation now. <laughs> take care of that situation now before Street Fighter VI comes out. So, you know, maybe this is a good thing that we're finding out early. But again... I don't want to sit here and immediately uh, accuse Arturo, you know, uh, I, I, again, I've had so many conversations with Arturo uh, in the past about trying to grow the fighting game community, about doing things for the fighting game community, about sacrificing yourself, martyring yourself for the fighting game community. And the conversations I've had with Arturo have always kind of lined up that way. And, like, I'm not sure how to put this without coming off like an asshole or anything like that. But from all the conversations that I've had with Arturo about helping the fighting game community, he seems very, very genuine about the whole entire thing. And for those of you who know anything about Arturo, and this is the part where I, I don't want to be mean to Arturo, and I don't want to uh, sound like an asshole to him at this point in time. I don't think Arturo is crafty enough to have been playing this long con with me. <laughs> like, you listen to that stream that Arturo did where he tried to defend himself and uh, he is not very good at presenting his case. It happened a lot with the monitor situation. Like, I w I've, I've talked to Mar Arturo a bunch about the uh, the, the, and, and again, I'm not being mean to Arturo because these are things that I've said to him in person, okay? 
when you listen to that stream, it was awful. It was awful. Awful, right? Arturo had no ability to defend himself at all whatsoever. And Arturo knows he's not a good public speaker. I have definitely talked to him a lot about the monitor uh, situation. And no, he's not dumb. He's not dumb. He's just not, I, he's just not crafty enough to try to do something like that. Because Arturo is a man who speaks from the heart. He speaks from the heart, and when you, if you look at the monitor situation, like any conversation that you talk to him about, if you listen to our interview, my interview with him, I kept trying to bring up like, hey, talk to me about this past history thing, and he'd be like, yeah, so anyway, the monitor situation, the hurts, you know, we need to do all this stuff, and I'm like, let's talk about Eddie Lee. Yeah, Eddie Lee is cool, but let's talk about this monitor situation. We need to get the input lag. And I'm like, Art, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> and, you know, that's the thing, right? Like, I, he speaks so much from the heart that those conversations that I've had with him about sacrifice, about, you know, about doing what's best for the fighting game community and trying his best to help the FGC doesn't jive with the whole concept of stealing money unless, like I said, he owed money to the mob or gambling debts or drug debts or something, right? Like, unless he was just super desperate, hit hard up for cash and was embarrassed to ask the FGC for help. And so the whole thing is just... uh really really kind of confusing so when man says in my opinion the main issue here isn't whether or not he was skipping pots i think there's enough benefit of doubt out there now that everyone was made square perhaps this is simply an issue of the way he was paying out people was a violation of Maturino's uh terms and tnc what is that T -t terms and conduct i think and perhaps matrino thought it better to kick him off instead of being implicated in potential payout funny business that had conditions okay uh that they'd probably let slide until they did it yeah there's definitely a lot of discussion of that as well windy man there's a lot of talk of that as well uh, but again, a lot of people have done that. I feel like I even did that when I ran some of those Soul Calibur tournaments that I used to run a long time ago. So, uh, oh, what's up, Converse310? Dude, I, I don't want to derail the conversation completely here, Converse, but just recently, I don't know why, but the whole uh, Chun-Li tutorial by Lil Shoto, the rap, came up on my timeline, and I noticed it was on, I think, your YouTube channel, and so, like, I'm like, I, you're not Lil Shoto. I know who Lil Shoto is, but it was still weird to me. Is that your channel? Is that actually your channel that you had that on there that has like a bazillion views? Uh, <laughs> in any case, um, yeah. And, 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 you know, that's the thing is I think we're in the situation right now where we need to find out more information uh, about this kind of situation. And I do think that, you know, I do think this might even be a little bit of extra blowback from the, the monitor situation because, like I said, Art is not very good at presenting his side of things. And like I said, I've literally, like, I don't want to say scolded Art, but I've literally had conversations with him where I'm like, Art, you are terrible at presenting your arguments and stuff. You know, this was when me I was talking to him about the, the monitor situation because Arturo's right about the monitor situation, right? He needs, we need to do better with that. I even said it last week in the uh, Ultra Chen TV Awards. We need to hold consoles accountable. Consoles need to be better about, you know, providing us abilities to reduce input lag and stuff like that. And Arturo was trying to fight for that, but he kept getting obfuscated and Arturo just pushed it so much that everybody got sick of it in the timeline. Like, I had so many people come up to me and be like, oh my god, I'm so sick of Arturo. Can he stop? Blah, 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 you know, all this stuff. And it was just like a lot of people were angry. Now, the end issue is, was Art skimming money via the 10% that he was technically able to do if approval was sent to match and it was properly expressed to the TOs and the players? 
Right, exactly. And that's what we need to find out. And uh, if Art was doing that, did he properly express it? Yes, that is definitely a, a, a valid question right there. And this is all the stuff that we got to find out. But as time has moved on, I feel like uh, the, 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 the results are getting a little murky. And like I said, the hardest part about this is that Art is really bad at defending himself. The fact that he's like deferring almost a fanatic basically to kind of defend him is an indication that even art understands <laughs> how bad he is at explaining things and expressing himself. So, uh, well then there's the issue. Did they actually stop paying art? Because that's what fanatics seem to imply happened. Matarino laid off folks and stopped paying staff. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, see, these are all, like, uh, interesting information. Art says he wasn't getting paid, and again, this is all hearsay and stuff like that, but we need to figure out exactly what the situation, and, and Baseball Super, he's not good at expressing high hertz monitors. He literally, I think, turned a bunch of people into anti-input lag, improving optimization people. There's a lot of people out there who are, like, like, it should have been a universal, yeah, this is what we should do. But because Art was so adamant about it and because of his method of constantly, quote, retweeting people, uh, I think it actually turned a lot of people off from that whole entire thing. And like I said, I think it's the right thing to discuss. We definitely need to improve the input lag and optimize everything. Now, the question is how far should we go? Because that brings up the conversation of what devs intended for the game, etc., etc. That's another conversation altogether. But optimizing it is pretty much the right decision to make, right? So, and yeah, Arturo says he had life difficulties and stuff. Uh, he says his father's in the hospital and all this stuff is happening. And again, you know, this is all just like I said, this is all just kind of a big giant miasma of information here right now. And I feel like we need to get more clarification on everything. And I think we're all still kind of working for more information. Arturo still keeps saying that he is going to bring out the receipts, which he hasn't yet. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, and if he wasn't getting paid, that is terrible, and people should come down on Matcharino for that, but that is a very different conversation, right? Yeah, it, there's a lot of... See, that's the problem here right now. What's happening is that people are seeing the situation, and they're taking everything they can to try to uh, prove someone is a good or a bad person through kind of like side... It's, it, it's very, very... Uh, weird situation it's a very weird situation like i said i am at a point where we have to take this very seriously we have to take this claim very seriously because if arturo was taking money that's unacceptable that's just that's just unacceptable my biggest problem is that like i said i i i've talked to art a lot especially about helping the fighting game community. I've had long conversations with him. He's talked about all the stuff that he's been doing with Matcharino and how proud he is of getting people money and stuff like that, right? Like like I said, sure, maybe he's just putting up a front and he's really proud about getting all these people money so he can take pieces of it himself. But like, I, I just, I can't, <laughs> from what I know of Arturo, that just doesn't jive with what I know about him or his personality, it like doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense to me. And like I said, from what I know of Arturo, it just doesn't seem like, it just doesn't, it just, it doesn't fall in line with all my conversations with him. And uh, like I said, I've had long, serious conversations with him and, uh, I mean, obviously one of the biggest uh, arguments for the fact that he has been skimming money is that he is in a financially difficult situation, right? But the thing about it is you can kind of see that where he's always putting it back in, right? And that's the thing. And so if he is taking money, like, he's is he doing it to pocket himself? Or, like, it's weird. Like, 
he's using it to buy better PCs or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's just it's it's just very very weird. Uh, very weird. Um, right. So uh, missing score says I think there's enough doubt here that canceling art and banning him from tournaments is way too harsh of a consequence. I mean, again, there's a lot of if you read the match on pages pages. Uh, separate so from horror from first time chatter here separate from every tournament sometimes it would show TOs take 10 to 15 percent other times the TOs would not take a cut of the crowdfunded donos uh, donations so on any tournament it was always up to the TO to decide and would show correctly on the match Reno page right right for sure it's supposed to be publicly out there basically it has to be out there right there but um, I just feel like we need more information. I, just, I feel like we need for information, and I'm not saying that if he if he's taking money from people and putting it back into the community, that's okay. Like, no, 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 it's not okay. But like I said, if somebody is hard up for money enough to steal money from that, it just doesn't seem like it makes sense for them to also be very obviously spending a lot of money <laughs> for a lot of the things that he's doing for the fighting community. You know, uh, that's that's kind of well. So uh, what I said about the receipts not being shown is I meant it on Arturo's stream. Arturo did not show the receipts. He did show. I did see that there was the receipt to Master Mike shown uh, on Fanatic stream. That's the only receipt that I've seen so far. Uh, but um, there was a receipt shown for him actually paying Master Mike out for an event that was claimed that he hasn't taken, uh, that he hadn't paid him, basically. So uh, it's, a, it's a weird situation. And um, that's the hardest part, is what Volvo says, Initial D Volvo says. We don't have much hard data from either Macharino or Art. And that's the hard situation right now. We we need to find out more. And yes, actually, Smash and Mill says probably the uh, most truthful thing out there. And he says both parties are at fault here. When the Panda tournament thing happened, when the Panda and the Smash World Cup thing happened, when that drama happened, King Hippo wrote a really nice blog post on his blog, uh, Them's Fighting Words, where he talked about, like, no one was probably malicious. Nobody probably tried to do anything wrong. It's just that everybody thought they were doing what was right, and people just got rubbed the wrong way, interpreted the wrong way, and so, like, everything kind of blew up and, you know, went to a head and just, you know, all of a sudden accusations and names and, 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 and you know, and just uh, mud being thrown around everywhere. I think the most truth in this situation is closer to what Smash a Mill says, that both parties are at fault, that both sides probably did something a little bit wrong. And it's just coming out in a way right now where it's ending up throwing people under the bus. So here's the thing is like, if that's the case, if that's the case, I don't want to see Art canceled. I don't want to see Macharino canceled, right? And that's the problem. Let's say Art does get proved proven innocent, right? Does that mean everybody's now just going to go and like say, oh, cancel Macharino, we'll never use Macharino again? Like... This is how the internet works, right? You either you're either here or you're here. <laughs> like you're never you're never in the middle. And I'm saying if they did do something egregiously wrong, yes, then absolutely. If art was stealing money, then we don't need him in the community anymore. If Macharino is doing something completely crazy out there, we don't need them in the community anymore, right? That's kind of the situation we have here. However, if the situation is more kind of like a, a middle ground, we need to evaluate the situation and just learn from our mistakes and try to do better. And the reason why we use Macharino uh, because instead of uh, like Venmo or PayPal Converse is because uh, it's a unified place in the thing is the money has to come from somewhere. So a lot of those coupon codes that Macharino gives comes from sponsors, right? 
So it's not just the donations, but also the coupon codes out there as well, as well as the, you know, uh, sponsor quests and the incentives like buying products and having parts of that go into the donation of the pot and stuff. It's a really convenient and actually a pretty nice service for helping raise the funds for the fighting game community. Arturo has almost raised half a million dollars in tournament prizes since he started using it, right? His numbers that he gave was like $480,000 or something like that, that he's that he's rewarded to the community. Now, if he skimmed a lot of that, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, there you go. And, 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 you know, if he's doing it as obvious as just rewarding himself the tournament payouts and pretending to PayPal people afterwards and doesn't have the receipts for that, I mean, it's just hidden in plain sight maybe is his tactic maybe that's what he's trying to do so but yeah so uh it's it's all an interesting situation and yeah we are we need to figure out more information people are demanding a lot of receipts from arturo i think we need to see receipts from Macharino as well we definitely need to see the information on you know, on, on on both sides of the story, in, in my opinion. So, um, right. And if Art was skimming, or even if not, and just paying himself to pay out others, that presents a risk to Mancherino. Yeah, because that's definitely a, a violation of the terms of service. Now, again, uh, I know a lot of TOs have done that before. Even one of the people accusing Art, uh, Bum, has done that before in the past as well. Um, but it is definitely a terms of service violation and maybe Macherino is just trying to clean that up a little bit or something or trying to, you know, uh, stop that basically. So, uh, and, and, and yeah, and, and that's the thing, right? So what Volvo says is that Macherino system was apparently prone to failure and people had multiple accounts, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of little things like that. And and, and here's the other thing too, is that keep in mind that Macherino is not a huge conglomerate. Like it's literally like this small group of people trying to run this. And you know, they have like, to say like Macherino is evil or anything like that is completely unfounded because thanks to them during the pandemic, a lot of people have been paid out for tournaments. A lot of people don't know how this works and that uh you so here's so here's to answer a question from to you converse uh we it is illegal in seven states for players to enter online tournaments and win money because it is considered gambling there is uh actually like it is actually illegal for like seven states for people to play in online tournaments so the only way they can get money outside of tournament entry fees uh, is through donations, through advertising, through sponsorship. That's the only way they're allowed to win money. They can't put money in themselves. If you're wondering why every single online tournament you have ever seen from House of Chaos to Tampa Never Sleeps to Rev Tuesday to Wednesday Night Fights Online to NLBC Online, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, have all been free to enter. That is the reason why, because otherwise you have to ban people from certain states. People are going to VPN and falsify their information just so they can play, etc., 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 is uh, really kind of uh, annoying to do. So, what they do, so they have to be free. So the only way we've been able to give prize money out to anybody has been through Macherino. Macherino has done a lot of great things for the fighting game community and people have literally won lots of money and gotten that money into their hands because of Macherino during the pandemic. Macherino has been one of the reasons why the fighting game community has actually survived pretty decently during the pandemic. And I think uh, that's the, uh, that's the, that's kind of how it is right now. 
And so, again, Maturino's done a lot of wonderful things as well. So it's not just like, oh, you know, if art is innocent, then we need to, then fuck Maturino. It's, it's, it's not that simple, right? It's not that simple. And, you know, it'd be nice to try to get to the bottom of this thing. Now, I would like to try to get to the bottom of this myself. I am not a detective, nor am I equipped or capable enough to be able to do this kind of uh, to, to to do this kind of delving and detective work and stuff like that so uh, I probably can't really do it so hopefully somebody else out there can so <laughs> hopefully somebody else out there can do it from a more impartial standpoint right that's the thing we need a little bit of impartiality here right so what Fanatic is doing is obviously very biased towards Arturo now he did so because he just honestly believes Arturo is innocent but we really need somebody who's unbiased to be able to try to look at both sides of things who actually has like real good news knowledge and real actual investigative work uh, capabilities <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, 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 no, I said it earlier, Converse, that Arturo stream was terrible, and that's what I mean, right, and, and like, the fact that that stream was so bad, and made himself look so incredibly guilty, okay, like, I saw that stream, and I was like, yo, that's it, that, that's, that's done, <laughs> right, like, it looked really, really bad, but again, Arturo's really bad at presenting himself, and like I said, some, I don't know, it's just like, he shouldn't have done that stream, man. <laughs> he shouldn't have done that stream until he had more evidence and more ability to present receipts, but it was, it was awful 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 right and that's the thing is it's so easy also to filter your paypal as well uh to show the information that he's that he's in and rob tv bless his heart did everything he could to try to help arturo out uh but again like i said arturo is just absolutely one of the worst people in presenting his case on anything when I was talking to him about the monitor situation, like literally I could not have a conversation with Art without him jumping all over the place. Like I would always be like, all right, this is what the focus of your message would be. And then he would just tangent off into like 17 different things. And I'm like, Art, stop, <laughs> focus, focus. This is the message of the input lag. This is what we need to do. And then he would tangent off into like 17 other things. And it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a, he's really, he's really bad. <laughs> no, no, I don't think uh, Rob TV didn't damage anything. Art definitely did that to himself. Just like uh, everybody's responding here. Uh, Rob TV did everything he could help. Rob TV is not at fault in this situation, but like I said, the hardest part for me, and this is unfair because like I said, this is another reason why I can't do this because I'm not sure how unbiased I can be. Rega I mean, the, 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 the hard part is that I love Maturino. I, I have been promoting Maturino. I've been helping them with a bunch of their streams and I have been talking up Maturino. I really believe in Maturino a lot. I think they do wonderful things for the fighting game community and have all but basically saved the fighting game community during this pandemic. But at the same time, I love art as well. Uh, and like I said, from all the conversations that I've had with him, just doesn't jive with him skimming money and taking money from people. You know, I've had way too many conversations with him about the efforts that he goes through to try to improve the fighting game community, why he wants the fighting game community to grow, how proud he is about getting Macharino into this. Because if it wasn't for Machir uh, for uh, for, uh, for uh, Arturo, Macharino wouldn't be in the FGC. Like, literally, just like nothing, nothing. Uh... So it's just, um, we need to, uh, like, I just don't see, like the whole thing is just really weird. Unless, unless Arturo's right and he says that they weren't paying him and maybe he was skimming money kind of like as a revenge kind of thing. 
I mean, that that is also a possibility as well, that he was doing it out of spite to Macherino, but that doesn't harm Macherino, does it? Does that harm Macherino, or does that harm the players, you know? Uh, that's the question, right? If he cashes out to himself, does he avoid the Macherino fees because he's part of Macherino, and so that way he can keep the Macherino fees for himself? That is definitely a possibility uh, as well, right? So maybe that's how he's trying to get back at Macherino for not paying him, right? So that's the whole situation, and we need to figure out uh, we need to figure out exactly what's going on. And I don't think we have uh, I don't think we have enough information, honestly. Uh, I don't think we have uh, enough information. So. All the Tios agreed to him taking a fee for handling the match Reno for them. It's possible, yeah. Um, but yeah, we just need to see some receipts. Arturo, if you ever watch this, give us some damn receipts, man. <laughs> give us the receipts. And uh, I mean, again, I've seen one from the Master Mike things. Apparently, some people in the chat are saying that he's presented more receipts uh, through fanatic stream. So if that's the case, I, 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 I would love to, you know, see that information or at least be, uh, told about that information as well. So, uh, they can Trini, they can take a cut on the Macherinos. Uh, a lot of them don't though. Uh, most of them don't because their money comes from the stream itself. Right. So they don't intend to take money via the vet Macherino. Some did like initial D Volvo said, but it's an option. It is not necessarily something that you have to do. And if you do do it, it says it on the Macherino page itself. So yeah, there you go. Um, this feels like one of those grassroots implicit understanding honor code type things that blew up in everyone's face over some bad blood. Yeah, it could be. It could be. But, uh, yeah, we need to, we need to figure out more. We need to figure out more of what's going on and, uh, hopefully we can get some more information and, uh, figure out what's going on. And again, if it does turn out that both, both parties have, done made mistakes if everyone can apologize to each other and you know we can just kind of move i don't want to say move on but learn from the situation and do better in the future i think that's that's kind of where we want to go unless one party explicitly did do something extremely extremely bad like i said if arturo did steal the money then absolutely Arturo needs to leave the FTC, right? If Macherino did something shady and uh, we don't know what it is and they threw Arturo under the bus, then yeah, then we have to start looking for alternatives to Macherino. So, um, I really feel like D Nice had very serious grievances. What do you mean by that, Eggball? Uh, what do you mean exactly? Uh, severe grievances. Are you saying that that, you know, that he was justified or you think he has motive or something like that? Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Um, um, yeah, Bifu definitely uh, was definitely, seems like he had some sort of a uh, 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 like genuine <laughs> hatred for Arturo. <laughs> oh man. Grudge. Yeah. Grudge. That's the word I think I'm looking for. So yeah. And again, you know, obviously if Arturo did embezzle money, if he did steal money, then there's no apologies. There's just, there's no apologies that's acceptable, right? He's stealing money from a community he's purportedly loving and trying to help grow. If he's stealing money from them, then there's really no apology that we can, we can actually accept, in my opinion. So, 
yeah, I guess I, I haven't known a lot about the Bifu and Arturo drama, but that's also because I generally try to stay away from a lot of that stuff, which is why I haven't really talked about this, uh, you know, on, on It Was Tuesday up until this point. But I just know people are going to ask about it once I start actually uh, uh, taking questions. So I just kind of wanted to get this, you know, get this straight here. I, I'm still of the I don't know. I don't know. Situ I need more information situation. Right. I need more situation, uh, more information. We don't have, you know, any sort of official like, you know, uh, investigations and any sort of court declarations or anything like that you know we we've got nothing right now except a bunch of people just talking and i feel like we need to get some more solid information uh to find out what's going on so uh that's basically what we need to do at this point so any case uh if you have more uh questions about this we can save that for the q a <laughs> we can we can save that for the q a portion of the show but for the most part uh i'm hope you know the fgc has been resilient and that's one of the probably the best lesson to kind of uh uh, learn here what necromancy black says he says don't worry i'm sure the fgc will continue to provide situations for years to come for sh it sh for sure doesn't appear to be freaking slowing down and yeah we're pretty resilient we've made it through a lot of really really rough spots and you know it does give the fighting game community a lot of unfair bad publicity and a lot of people say that the FGC is a trash fire or a dumpster fire because of all the stuff that keeps happening to the fighting game community and stuff and I really do think it's a little unfair because I do feel like that this happens to a lot of communities out there the interesting thing about the fighting game community is we have no governing body right since we do not have a governing body we do not have uh, everything is just out there <laughs> <laughs> right there's nobody to go and appeal to or talk to and be like hey riot we've heard this is happening and then riot can do all the investigation and stuff for fgc it's just like this crappy thing happened Blech. and there it is it's all out there on twitter you know uh and that's that's what it is out there and 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 that's what we have that's what makes the fighting game community appear a lot more problematic than a lot of other communities out there but in my opinion fighting game community is almost like it's almost kind of better you know that a lot of this stuff is kind of public a little bit because it's harder to get away with things <laughs> honestly <laughs> it's kind of hard to get away with things and the dangers of a governing body I'm always worried about is I'm always worried about the governing body are going to have biases. Now, if you're a riot and you're promoting League of Legends, your biases are fine because you're promoting only League of Legends. But for fighting game community, what if somebody who's on the governing body just has it out for NRS games? What if someone on the governing body just really hates MVCI? You know, like this is, I mean, like we, I mean, MVCI didn't make it to Evo that one year, right? I mean, like, was that a governing body decision for Evo? Sure, but that doesn't stop everybody else from putting MVCI at their tournaments. And this is what I mean, right? This is what I mean. It's dangerous to create a unified governing body for the FGC. And I don't think that that's the right answer. I really don't think that's the right answer. I... I, I I don't know what the right answer is because if we continue this way, I had a conversation with someone about this on Twitter. If we continue this way, it's going to be really hard for the FGC to grow and for it to be like a financially viable industry for people. But um, I don't know, even as somebody who's basically put my full time into it, I'd almost rather have the, lack of a governing body than the financial security just to just to keep the fgc free from being affected by those kind of biases you know 
it's uh that that's kind of how it is so uh, see that's the thing money bags people say that bring back the 2008 fgc <laughs> no as a person who was very much entrenched in 2008 fgc no i don't want a piece of that at all <laughs> i don't want a piece of that at all okay what we are in right now is infinitely better than what we were in in any of the previous years. Anyone always asks me, what's the golden age of the fighting game community? Now? <laughs> now is the fighting oh, golden age of the fighting game community. If you really think that uh, we're in a bad situation in the FGC, that's uh, just not true. We're in a wonderful position right now because we have a situation where devs are listening to us. We have actual online net play that works for the majority of our games. We have streams. We have people watching them. People playing Street Fighter V have won $250,000 for life-changing money. Like, we are way, way better off now than we were back then. Now, are we still in a good position? Are we in a good position? Hell no! We're still the little fish in a big pond, right? So we're still trying to work our way up. But the interesting thing about the way the FGC works is that we're always doing it our way. And I think that that's the most important thing. I, I would rather have the fighting game community continue to grow at this pace and do things uniquely fighting game community than to adopt what other esports are doing and just try to go straight up copy other esports. Because frankly, when I was younger, if I thought we would be in this position right now, uh, I would have expected that I'd be 80 years old by now. Like, uh, I, there's no way that I would have thought we would be at a point where we were filling stadiums and awarding $250,000 to a fighting game player in 2023. There's just no way. There's no way. And so we're ahead of the curve right now. So if we keep going in the direction that we're going, I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm cool. I've been doing this for 20 some odd years. I'm going to do my best to make it better to get us past the uh the the grassrootsy kind of phase here i'm trying to do my best to turn it a little bit more mainstream but i'm not gonna rush it just because like some organization comes out and is like we're gonna be the governing body here's a bazillion dollars like that is not how the fighting game community is going to succeed <laughs> that is not how the fighting game community is going to succeed so uh, I mean, it's interesting. The Riot Fighting Game can change a lot of things. However, the Riot Fighting Game is being made by Tom and Tony Cannon, who run EVO, who, ha who are the two people who have done more for the fighting game community than anybody else has ever done for the fighting game community. Like, if Tom and Tony Cannon did not exist in the FGC, the FGC would not exist. Like, period. At least not in the United States. We would have no scene here. Absolutely. Tom and Tony are the only reason why there's a fighting game community out here. And these are the guys that are making the Riot fighting game. So it'll be interesting to see if they have enough of a clout to be able to uh, unriot a few riot-y things. <laughs> oh, man. Um... But, uh, I, I mean, you can say whatever you want about Riot, whether you like Riot or not. I mean, all the companies are doing it, right? I mean, it's, it's just the way it is, right? So, uh, I don't want to... Dude, there's no... Okay, Scrubby Scrub, Scrubberton says, Reality without the Cannon Brothers, there is no GGPA, there is no Evo, there is no FGC, there is no Shoryuken.com. <laughs> Uh, there's, uh, there's so much that they've done for the fighting game community, man. And if you want to talk about the people who have put the money into the, uh, FGC at no benefit to themselves, you look at the cannons, dude, you look at the cannons for sure, for sure. <laughs> Dios X, who are the cannon brothers? The SRK mafia. <laughs> oh my God. Come on, Dio Sex, you know exactly who the cannons are. I know you do. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> the SIK forms were wild in 09. Hell yeah! That's when the 09ers came in, dude! That's when the 09ers came in! <laughs> but again, you know, one of the people that have been through this whole entire thing is Arturo, right? He's been there since the beginning. And that he's stayed here in the fighting game community for this long so that he can steal money from the fighting game community... <laughs> which he knows has no money. <laughs> Seems like a very weird decision to make <laughs> and is one of the things that I can't grasp logically. Like I said, there is a there is a potential truth to Arturo playing the long con for this, but good god, what a terrible idea and too, like I said, Art is the kind of person that wears everything on his sleeve. His heart is on a sleeve. It's like just talking to Art, like the the way that he spews information out and the inability for him to seem like he could control what he's saying, because it's just, it just, he just says it. He just says it. Like to be able to have been using Macherino for five years, stealing money from people and just not accidentally like blurting it out <laughs> seems very unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> very, very unlikely, uh, honestly. So, and, 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 you know, so the conclusion is, Foo 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 asks, is he guilty, Arturo? No idea. We need more information. Uh, we need more information. And yeah, how, how many people knew Arturo was doing this and said nothing? Right. I mean, you'd think there'd be a lot more people being like, I haven't got my money yet from Arturo for years. But we haven't gotten that, really. We haven't gotten that from a lot of players. We haven't gotten a lot of people stepping out and saying, yeah, so uh, he hasn't paid me from this tournament from three years ago. <laughs> like, we, we haven't gotten a lot of that. We've gotten a few people, but a, a lot of them were more recent and some of them were kind of vague. <laughs> and Arturo did admit that he took a long time to pay people out recently. So I don't know. I don't know. We need to, we need to find out. We need to find out. So we need to find out more. <laughs> I don't know what you're referring to, Dio Sex. <laughs> uh, but yes, oh, all the revelations. God. Oh my God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, boy, you are going down a rabbit hole, dude. You are, you have dug. 20 feet underground, Dios X, to, 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 to pull that one out. Holy crap. Holy crap, man. Man, oh, man. Oh, man. Okay, any case. Uh, let's, uh, let's move on here. I I've said enough. I've spent way more time on this than I was expecting to. It's been an hour already. I didn't mean to talk about this for an hour at all. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, only Grim Crimson says I'm sad now. Absolutely. I am super depressed because I, I really enjoyed the Arturo Macherino combination. I thought that they were doing so much good for the fighting game community. If you've seen my past streams and, and you know, my past support for Macherino, I'm all in there. I'm like, let's go Macherino, let's go Macherino, kind of thing like that. And if this is a really bad situation, like I am, I am literally beside myself. I, 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 I would hate to have this, you know, come out as Arturo is stealing or that Macherino is doing something shady. Like, neither of these outcomes to me is good. <laughs> like, I, I, and, and maybe that's a problem of mine is that I, I, I have all of hope that, you know, we can, that both sides are innocent and it just is all one big misunderstanding, which is probably not true because it's more like what was said earlier. Both par parties are probably in the wrong, but, Regardless, I really, really hope that somehow we can just figure out that this was just a misunderstanding. Everyone's cool. Maybe Art and Macherino don't work with each other directly anymore, but 
you know, people can accept that Arturo didn't do anything wrong, Macharito didn't do anything wrong, it was just a bunch of people, a bunch of humans being humans. As long as they didn't do anything super, super, super badly, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> oh, God, situation sucks. Yeah, there's the, there's the conclusion, Nerf Dalsim. <laughs> I like it, Zook Boots, that's how we end this conversation, Nerf Dalsim, there we go. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a uh, quick break right here. And when we come back, I'm just going to do a Q&A. So Ed the Gamer, save your question for after the break. When we come back after the break, we will definitely discuss. Uh, I, we're going to do a Q&A to start off the year because I just got to want to know what a lot of people want to see out of 2023, what they expect uh, from 2023, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to a break. When we come back, uh, Q&A session here. Don't go anywhere. Thank you, guys, for tuning in to It Was Tuesday. Be right back. <laughs> 